Hi, today's video we're going to talk about how to solve our quadratic graphs by graphing. So we're going to start with a word problem. We have Sarah. Sarah decides to help her dad make a tree house. She climbs up high into the tree house and waits for her dad to throw her a rope from below. Her dad's throwing of the rope can be modeled by our quadratic equation given here where x is in seconds and y is the height of the rope in feet. So it is important to note what it tells you your variables are representing. So x is going to be the time that's passing, x is in seconds. And then y is the height of the rope in feet. So height is that vertical distance. And Sarah, she's sitting 18 feet up into that tree. And that's a really important piece of information that's going to come into play. All right, so her dad's throwing her the rope. How many chances does Sarah have to catch the rope? Explain. All right, so we're gonna need our calculator for this one. So if you don't have your calculator out, go ahead and press pause and get it. So we have our calculator. We are going to go into our graph. So again, if you're on your home screen, you're gonna hit the Y equals button, and we're gonna enter in that equation that we were given, a negative, 16x squared plus 30x plus 5.5. We always want to start off with a standard window, a 10 by 10 window. So we go to zoom 6 and then we adjust as needed. So here we can see our parabola starting, but we need to see higher up on that parabola. So I need to look up which means I need to change my y value. Not the y min, but the y max. The y min would move my graph down. My y max is going to move my graph up. So I'm going to change it to 20 and see if that does the trick. And it does. You can move it up higher if you don't like not seeing that whole vertex. You want a little bit more room. It doesn't matter. Remember, as long as you can see the whole parabola, you're good to go. So as I look at this parabola, our first question is, how many chances does Sarah have to catch the rope? Explain. Well, right now, all I have is this parabola. And I have no idea how many chances she has to catch the rope. This is where the height of Sarah is going to come into play. Because remember, her dad is down here and he's throwing the rope up to Sarah. So we need to include Sarah's height on this. So in our calculator, we're going to go back to our y equals, and I'm going to change that height. So I'm going to go to y2, and I'm going to enter in 18, because Sarah is 18 feet up on our graph. So now we can see here is Sarah's height. Again, that's that y equals 18. We said there are going to be two different chances for her to catch that rope. Two chances. Because the rope's path reaches 18 feet twice. It hits 18 feet once on the way up and once on the way down. So again, her, her dad is down here. He throws it up. It reaches 18 height right there, and maybe she misses it. It's going to hit its maximum height, and then it's going to come back down. So she has two different chances to catch that rope. How many seconds will it take for the rope to reach Sarah? So again, we have these two different circumstances, one right here and one right there. We're going to find both of those. So in our calculator, we're going to find out where the parabola is intersecting that line of 18. We go to second trace, number five, intersection. Remember, it's going to walk you through it, first curve. The first curve is y1. That's our parabola. Yeah, we want the intersection between the parabola and that horizontal line. When you hit enter, it's going to automatically bounce to y2, which is that horizontal line, and then guess. So we see that the first point is at 0.62518. And again, it makes sense that it's at 18 because that's the height of Sarah. So it takes 
0.625 seconds. And this is on the way up. And then it's going to come back down. So we're going to do that same calculation again. Second trace, number five. Enter, enter. But this time I need to scroll over so it doesn't give me that same intersection point. And there's my second chance. That second intersection point is at 1.25, 18. So the second chance is at 1.25 seconds, and this is on the way down. So when we are solving by graphing, what we are going to be looking for are those intersection points. So let's go ahead and start solving some of these. Here's a quadratic, x squared plus 2x equals 15. Now we have already talked about how to factor, but we're not factoring here. We have our quadratic. When we're looking for solving by graphing, we're looking for the intersection. We're going to put the left-hand side of our equation in y1, x squared plus 2x. And we're going to put the right-hand side of the equation into y2. We're going to look for the intersection point between those two pieces. Now, when we're going to find our solutions, we look at the equation. Hmm, the only variable that we see in that equation is the x value. So when you're solving, your solutions are x equals, not the coordinates of the points. The coordinates of the points are what we use to find what we're looking for. So again, back to our calculators. Clear out what we just worked on. So we have x squared plus 2x and y1, 15. Now we already had our graph moved up to 20 for the last problem, and I know that's going to be good enough. So we see, pay attention as we go to sketch our graph, pay attention to the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and where things are crossing. When you sketch, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does need to be accurate. So I see that I have looks like an intercept at 0, 0, and over here. When I sketch my graph, I'm going to make sure that I accurately portray that. Everything's in the right, right quadrant. Okay, and then I'm going to, again, be looking for these intersection points. Back to the calculator, second trace. Number five is that intersection. Enter, enter, enter. It'll bring you to the first of the intersection points, which is 315. Now we gotta do it all over again. Second trace, number five, enter, enter. Now you gotta scroll. Remember, you have to go more than halfway to the other point, because it's gonna calculate the point that is the one that it's closest to. And this one is at negative 515. So remember, we are looking for the x values. So we have a solution at x equals a negative 5 or a solution at x equals 3. So every time we are solving by graphing, we are looking for the intersection point. Now we're going to look at solving a system. So we just pointed out in the last one, number one, the only variable I saw was x's. That's not the case when I look at number two. Number two, I have a system of equations here. I can still solve a system of equations using my graphing method. We put 3x squared minus 4 into y1. Notice how it's already said equal to y equals. And that's what your calculator is as well. And then we take the second equation and we enter that into y2. Again, this is only going to work if you have it set equal to y, because in your calculator it's y equals. Clear out what we had. So we have x squared plus 2x plus, oops, we don't have that. We have 3x squared minus 4. You're probably like, what are you typing into your calculator? 
clear out that one, and we have 3x. Now, as I get ready to graph this, let's think about what we expect to find. Our first equation is a 3x squared. So we know this is going to be a parabola. The second equation is a 3x. That is a linear equation. So I expect to see a parabola and a line. We're going to start back with our standard window, zoom, 6. There's my parabola. There's my line. What we do isn't going to change. We're still going to find those intersection points. And I'm going to sketch. I'm going to look at those x-intercepts, the y-intercept. I'm going to look at where my pieces are crossing to help me as I sketch this. So we have our parabola. Let's see how well I can sketch my graph. That line is going through 0, 0, and it's going to have these two intersection points. Let's go ahead and find those. Second trace, number 5. Enter, enter, enter. Remember, we just hit enter three times, and it's going to bring us to the closest point. We see our intersection point down here. We're going to label that coordinate. We always label our coordinates. I'm going to go to the nearest hundredth, so negative 0.76 comma negative 2.27. Go back to our calculator all over again. Second trace number five. Enter, enter. We got to scroll to that other one. We hit enter again. Once my word changes to intersection, now I have my second point. Again, rounding to the nearest hundredth, making that 1.76. 1.76, 5.27. Now this is different because we have a system of equations. We have two variables. We have an x and a y. So when we have an x and a y that we are solving for, now our solutions are the coordinates of that point. So negative 0.76 comma negative 2.27 and 1.76 comma 5.27. So a difference that you do want to pay attention to, if your original equation only has one variable, my solution is just what does that x value equal. If you're solving a system, we are looking to solve for an x value and a y value. So your solution is going to be the coordinates of the ordered pair between those intersection points. Okay, that is it for today's video. You are all set.